Hey guys, Adrian D'Amico here. Welcome to another episode of Life Lessons TV, episode number 13 Q&A. So Life Lessons TV, look, it's gonna be sort of, I think, a little bit edgy. I think it's gonna be a little bit off the cuff. Um, I'm letting you know now that once I get excited about a topic, uh, I might swear a little bit, I might let uh, you know, a couple of curses go. So it's one of those things where I think I just want things to be kind of real. Okay, welcome back. Uh, back up here in nature again. I love this place. Um, for those of you who are local to me, this place is called the Rhododendron Park and um, it's just a beautiful, peaceful surrounding. And um, I know it's in black and white, but um, it, it is just a beautiful place. Actually, you can't see this in camera right now, but there's just on the branch up here, there's a kookaburra looking at me up there. And then just on the branch um, to the right of me is another kookaburra looking down. So I've got some, I've got an audience here today, uh, which is great. Anyway, I'm talking to you today with a, a Q&A session. I uh, put a shout out on Facebook uh, last week for some questions. And when I do this, it's, it's about life, it's about business and whatever. It's pretty open slather. And I've got quite a few questions that have come in. So I'm going to do my best to try and um, answer them in the best Best way possible and to my own knowledge and um, uh, and I'm gonna try and do it in such a way that this doesn't end up being a, an hour-long video as much as I'd like that and I can talk all day um, I'm very um, I guess uh, appreciative of your time and, and I'm respectful of your time so anyway I'll babble on all, too long already so anyway let's um, let's get down to the first question I just got to scroll down I'll, uh, there's, been, there's a couple of people that have asked questions before and I just want to do some service to people that haven't asked questions. Um, this one here is from Catherine Ross. Hello Catherine, uh, when in a growth phase and you haven't yet formed a team, how would you tackle this? Um, Catherine, look, thanks very much for your question and uh, I can totally relate to this because uh, me personally, I'm in a growth phase. Um, I uh, left a traditional business, sold traditional business um, last year and in around sort of June this year, it'd be full 12 months. But this year, 2016, is my first full year of non-stop business. I sort of took an opportunity to go away with the family and go overseas and do all the things I've never done uh, or had the opportunity or money to do uh, in the past. Last, you know 12 years or so and, and and I did them last year so now that I got that out of the way uh, I've been focusing on my marketing and really establishing myself as the go-to person as a business coach as a social media marketer uh, and speaker I've got uh, a lot of things going on at the moment, but as a result of that, uh, there's been an upturn in or an uptake in my services and I'm in a growth phase. What I've done to combat the fact that I don't have the staff and I don't know how applicable this is to you because I don't understand your business or know of your business and um, perhaps if you wanted to message me and let me know um, you know what it is you do and how this applies to you that'd be great but what I've done is I've leveraged myself um, in terms of getting other staff but I've gone overseas for this I've got virtual assistants and as a matter of fact um, not only have I got um, one but I've got three so essentially what I've done is, is that uh, I needed someone who could assist me from an IT perspective. So I've gone and sourced a, um, a virtual assistant that can help me from an IT point of view. I needed a ghostwriter, I needed things like that, so I've gone and sourced someone who can do that. Um, and I also need someone who can then, uh, I guess, do sort of day-to-day -day up, you know, uploads or, or you know, tweaks on my website, you know, or search engine optimization, you know, those sorts of things. So I've gone and, and got a, a VA for that. So I don't use them all the time, uh, but typically speaking, this, these are people that, in terms of their academic ability they're like you know uh, a university qualified person however they don't come at a cost of fifty or eighty thousand dollars per year um, they're generally somewhere between sort of um, you know five and ten thousand dollars per year so 
and that's not using them full time. If it was full time, maybe it'd be, be a bit more than that, but that's how I do it, and that's how I'd recommend you to do it. I use services like Elance, like Fiverr, um, like Canva, you know, stuff like that for infographics, um, for ebook covers, for, you know, for um, ads on Facebook and all that kind of, kind of stuff. Uh, I outsource that, and I think a lot of business owners need to really look openly to outsourcing and see how that can benefit their business. Businesses and, and that's what I do. So I hope that's answered your question. Um, if you need manpower, you know, on deck, well, then it might be different in terms of a part-time staff or whatever it might be. Uh, but if it, if you just need someone who can help you with the day-to-day -day stuff that frees you up to do more of the the dollar productive things, uh, I definitely recommend outsourcing. Okay, moving along. Uh, Lisa Burling, thanks very much for your question. What are your top tips for staying motivated? It can be hard to stay uh, pumped uh, all the time, especially with a small team um, looking uh, to you to keep the excitement levels up. Okay, uh, look, it starts with you. At the end of the day, for me personally, I certainly have my days where I feel, um, you know, I have my down days. You know, I have my days where I'm not feeling crash hot. And uh, I have to start to get grounded in touch. So uh, one of the things that, that I, I definitely love doing is I love getting back in, in contact with nature. Uh, I've got a little spot that I pick down the beach and I go there, I do a, a morning walk for example, um, and I get the blood flowing, I get the cardiovascular activity going, and I head down to the beach and I sit there um, and what I do is I actually uh, take my you know, shoes and socks off and things like that and I feel, it's going to sound a bit woo woo, but I feel the energy, the vibration of the earth. And this grounds me, it centers me, I love the listening to the waves and I practice just a general breathing meditation. It's nothing too um, exciting and it's nothing too in depth and, and, and hard to learn. It's breathing meditation. Uh, it's mindfulness and, uh, and I certainly, um, I guess, start to think of affirmations of, of what I want to uh, set the intention for that day and then I, and I kind of have this thing, that's why I like the waves of you know, having the energy from the earth come through my body and sort of the light, in a sense, um, burns off uh, you know, all the negative feelings and all the feelings of you know, being lethargic or feeling down or what have you. And then I imagine the ocean coming over and just cleansing my whole body. And the visualization that I have in my mind is almost like my entire silhouette of my body, my entire outline is becoming invisible. So you see the faint outline of my body, but it becomes one with the earth, all right? The reason why I mention this in terms of motivation is because it's, it's in, within you. Um, and then your team will pick up on your centeredness, your team will pick up on your groundedness, your team will pick up on how level you are. And then when it comes time for you to switch on and go, hey, this is what we need to do today, you'll find, I think, yourself being more assertive um, and being more motivational, more encouraging, because you yourself are feeling that way, if that makes sense. So if you're feeling like shit, well then, it's very hard to switch it on and go, hey, pick yourself up and, you know, off we go, uh, because they can see right through it, they can sense it, um, particularly women. I mean, you know, they're more uh, intuitive than men, so, um, yeah, they can pick it. They can pick it a mile away, and I've had people say to me, you know, even on camera, I can tell when you're not on. Um, I think 99% of people will probably might miss it with me, but there is certainly a small fraction of people that will say, hey, listen, I can sort of tell that you weren't feeling the best, and I can see that you're a bit doubtful, and and that just really comes from how I'm feeling inside. Okay, so you change what's happening on the inside and then the outside will look the same. Hope that helps. Okay, here we go. Special mention to Elizabeth because she's following all these questions and wants to know, um, you know, how things pan out or what the answers are because they're really good questions. So here you go, Elizabeth. I hope you're enjoying this. Um, Aisha, I want to answer this question from Aisha. It's a real... Uh, it's a real doozy in a sense, in a, for me, it's, I've never been asked this before and it's, it's sort of simple but for, profound at the same time. What sort of life do you want to live? 
Um, Aisha, thank you. I hope I pronounced your name right, Aisha. Um, thank you very much for your question. And I know you've been following my post for a while, so uh, I haven't, um, that hasn't gone unnoticed either, so thank you so much. Um, interesting to note that a lot of questions come from, uh, from women, they're more open to asking questions. I think that's um, you know, something for us men to, to pick up on, is that we, we don't, uh, we really ask for help. So um, anyway, in saying that, <laughs> there is a, a man that's asked a question here. So uh, what sort of life do I want to live? Hey, in, in short, simple terms, because again, I don't want to have this, this video go on forever. Um, I want to be someone who makes a difference in the world. And I know that sounds, you know, Anthony Robbins and all that shit, but uh, it's the truth. I, I, I don't want to be anything but normal in the sense of, and this is with respect to everyone out there listening no matter what your position in life is because I certainly have not achieved uh, anywhere near the level of income, the level of success that I want in my life but this is my intention uh, and this is how I feel. So I want to be a needle mover uh, meaning that because of my actions, because of how many people I influence, um, I've made a positive change in their lives, I've got them to shift. Um, for me, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So whenever I work on someone else, it propels me further as well. So it's one of the things that I love about this profession and the thing that, that draws me to it so much is that I actually, I guess, further my own goals and careers and aspirations by helping others do the same. And the things that I learn, I teach. So when I'm teaching these things to, to my students in uh, like my social media courses, in the workshops so that I do, um, you know, in the business coaching to my one-on-one -on -one clients, uh, also, I typically am learning um, something, implementing something within my own life or business that has worked or either not worked um, or experienced you know, and then I'm kind of sharing that wisdom and knowledge with them. Uh, I mean, so I've gone through a, a, self, a couple um, of traumatic you know, days uh, just recently is kind of like I'm um, with my eldest son, son. and time. you know he's uh, he's a thinker he he's at that age he's a tender age of just nine would you believe and and really analyzing why things happen in the world why he's feeling the way he's feeling he's starting to understand that there's a start and a stop to life um, so he's starting to really talk about things which I don't think I ever talked about as a nine-year-old but he is um, and I've gone through a bit of a difficult time with him in the last few days because um, it's been challenging to try and help him see that what he's worrying about is something in the future um, and I think that's that's probably a learned response from him and not to get too sort of technical and um, uh, and again the things that I want to implement in my life and achieve in my life is is truly for the benefit of not only myself but my family and in particularly my three boys um, I want them to grow up to be young um, you know forward-thinking driven men no matter what they choose to be do or have in their life that's the attitude that I want them to see through me and I want them to understand that they too can set a goal and achieve it and be whatever they want in life because they haven't um, they've witnessed it from their dad and what they're witnessing for me now, particularly like I said with my older boy, is he's saying, you know, I want to achieve things like you're achieving. He made me, he made me laugh the other day. He said, I just don't think I've, I've accomplished so much in my life. And I said, well, you're nine. And he said, yeah, but you know, you've got your own YouTube channel. And I, you know, I just had to burst out laughing. It was, it was a fucking serious moment, but at the same time, it was, it was bloody funny. Um, so anyway, that's the life that I want to live. All right, moving along, I have a question here from, from uh, uh, Graham, Graham Lancaster. Hey mate, how are you? Long time no speak. Um, what agreements do you make with yourself? Now you asked me to look up the four agreements and I, I, I'm sorry, I haven't done that yet. Um, but in terms of agreements, you know what, this got me, to th got me thinking actually because there are certain things that are, uh, I think that I have agreements with myself, but they're unwritten. So I haven't laid them out and I probably should. 
And for those of you listen, listening, if you want to look up the four agreements and uh, and find out what they're all about and, and um, send them to me, that'd be great. Um, but there, there's certainly things that, um, in my mind, when I thought about the agreements that I have with myself, is that... Um, I certainly look after my health. I feel that my health is an agreement or something that I have an agreement with myself that is um, paramount to anything else. This uh, surpasses really in hierarchy of my wife and my kids um, because I know that without proper health, I know that without having um, a, a healthy mind, healthy body, that I can't do the things that I want to do for them. So health and is something that's certainly an agreement that I have. It's something that's been instilled in me for a long time. I had My dad bought me a gym when I was about 13. Well, he bought himself a gym and didn't want to use it. Then I started using it. At 13, joined the gym at 15, um, started training with one of my school, high school teachers which, who was a runner and then you know, started from then, got into personal training at sort of 17, 18 and that was my first business working for myself at, at that point. Um, but it's just always stayed a part of my life. Now that disclaimer there is that sometimes I lose, I lose it and there's been times where I've like, you know, not watched my weight and eaten too much and, you know, ballooned up and then got back down again. I've been losing the same 11 kilos for the past 10 years. So um, that being said, it's always paramount in my in my mind, uh, and and it, it has a lot of effect on my day to day thinking. I still eat, um, you know, correctly 90% of the time, 85% of the time. I work out three to five days per week, and um, that's something I think that will always remain. And my running joke is I can't do much about this face, but I can certainly improve the body. So. Um, you know, I couldn't really come up with four um, agreements, Graham, and, and I think that that's something that I certainly need to work on. I thank you for the question. It's opened my mind up to a, to a couple of things, but um, the second one that I come up with is, is family uh, because that certainly is something that I place a high priority on about family first. I teach my kids that, you know, not to, to treat each other with love and, uh, love and respect, um, to treat their friends with love and respect, but mainly their family in a sense that the family is all you got. Um, you got, you know, they've got two brothers, you know, there's three of them, so they've got two brothers and if I'm talking to one, I'm saying, hey, these are your brothers for life, you know, look after them, be friends, treat them with love and respect because they're going to be with you day in, day out. And that comes from, a, a stems from a, a fact that I've had a, a broken family, you know, my parents split up um, when I was uh, 17, 18 and, uh, and, and my entire family fights at any one time. I've got that, you know, typical dysfunctional sort of family going on and that's what I've experienced and live through my life as something that I definitely do not want for my kids um, and 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 that in itself is 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 a massive challenge for me it's a massive challenge in this respect in terms of work in terms of achievement staying married um, and that's not from a fact uh, from a case of you know doing the wrong thing it's a case of there's so many things I want to achieve and you know to hold it all together is um is is very very tough so anyway graham thanks very much uh, for your question uh one last one i'm not sure how, how we're going for time this is probably hitting more to around the 15 sort of 20 minute mark but if i can just choose one other question i've lost my place uh bear with me okay um Question from uh, Papa uh, Franciscini. So thanks very much. You've been a follower for a while too. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, you know, for those of you out there who haven't liked my fan page, like it, share it. Um, I think it's, you know, uh, the rumors that I've heard is that it's one of the best pages out there. But um, don't take my word for it. You know, like it and see if you, if you like the posts on there. But anyway, Papa, you said, uh, this actually ties in nicely to what I was just saying. Do you have time for yourself and family, especially if you're running a business? Um, look, it's... Uh, yeah, I do. I feel like I've got a lot of balance in life. I feel like I've got a lot of time, particularly since I've sold my last business, which did consume a lot of my life. Um, I, I have more time now than ever 
However, I'm dedicating more time now than ever to this, this new business. Um, one of the things that I've decided to do with this business is to plan around my life and lifestyle that I want to leave, um, a lead rather, and that actually is, is quite difficult to, um, to articulate and, to, and to, to put into place because uh, I'm hustling and hustling and hustling at the moment. I'm really trying to hit the ground running and uh, I'm working my freckle off some days, uh, you know, that like sort of go from sun up to sun down depending on what I got on during the day. And when I've got my boot camps and workshops and things like that, it's very intense. There's seven, like seven hours of speaking in one day. There's a lot of lead up towards it. There's the marketing and promotion, then my one-on-one -on -one clients, then my social media management, uh, and then the programs that I really want to get into. To. So uh, one of the things I'm doing at the moment is finishing off an ebook and and doing an audio program and and. Uh, um and turning my workshop into a program that I can then sell online. So, you know, I've got a lot of balls up in the air, a lot of things to juggle. But one of the things I do do is I take a lot of time out with the kids, take them to school, pick them up, take them to sport. Um, we do our things on the weekends and stuff like that. So I have my balance there. I go to the gym late at night. So when everyone goes to sleep, I head off to the gym, usually around 9, 9.15 at night, and I do my workout there. Um, the thing that I definitely need to pick up my slack with because my wife works part-time and, you you know, just in between all the throws of you know doing the day-to-day -day stuff of washing, cleaning, picking up, dinner, breakfast, all that kind of jazz with three kids and the business, um, I think we suffer the most out of all of this. You know, and that's um, just the God's honest truth. You know, I think there's we don't allow enough time for each other. Um, we don't allow enough um, time just just for us. Um, one of the things I made up for big time last year was I went away for six weeks overseas. But of course, you can't just go away for six weeks um, whenever you feel like it, you know. So, yeah, one of the things I'll you know definitely need to implement within my life to ha add more balance is um, is more one-on-one -on -one time with my wife and make sure that we do you know more sort of time out with each other and you know little weekend away here and there and things like that. So. Um, anyway, yeah, so in an answer to your question, it's not really an answer, I guess, but probably more of an explanation of what I'm going through. Uh, at times I find I'm, I'm very, very balanced, and other times I find it's sort of out of whack. Um, but I also understand and appreciate that that's the nature of being an entrepreneur. If I wanted uh, balance and just have everything working like clockwork, uh, I'd just go and get a normal nine to five job, be happy with my seven, eight hundred bucks a week and, you know, clock on at nine, clock off at five and just live that kind of life. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just not the life that I want to live. All right, guys, episode number 13. I hope that didn't run too long, and I hope you got a lot of it. Thank you so much for your questions. Uh, look, if you liked it, share it. Uh, make sure you um, uh, comment and, and leave me some feedback, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Bye for now. So Life Lessons TV, Look, it's going to be sort of, I think, a little bit edgy. I think it's going to be a little bit off the cuff. Um, I'm letting you know now that once I get excited about a topic, uh, I might swear a little bit. I might let uh, you know, a couple of curses go. So it's one of those things where I think I just want things to be kind of real. <laughs>